Okay. So I just finished up. Oh, even the box feels good. Uh, copy of Pandemic. Uh, and I have to say, I had sort of some misgivings when I looked at the game. But I knew I wanted to try it out and, and pick it up if I could get a reasonably priced copy. And I got one. Um, mainly because when it comes down to it, it as a co-op game, it is really almost a solitaire game. With everybody facing the same victory conditions, You know, how, how is that not a multiplayer solitaire game? And, and not one where, you know, you're, you're trying, uh, you know, to each out, out do the other, like in something like Tales of the Arabian Nights. Which, if that's why you're playing it, you're playing it wrong. But, and I, I don't have a good track record with solitaire games. I, I usually really despise them. Although I kind of enjoy them more if there's more people. But with this game... I actually got really kind of hooked on, on the way it played, etc. I feel like it really evoked uh, the spirit and, and, and the actions much better than most solitaire games do in terms of uh, showing them out on the map and, and what's happening and the disease is growing. Um, maybe just having those separate players playing helped a little bit, although I find that games like Source of the Nile, which really are multiplayer solitaire games, uh, don't play as well solo. I want people around with that. I think this would be better with people. But I actually got some enjoyment out of it uh, quite a bit, which kind of surprised me out of the storyline, out of what was happening, out of the theme. Let's think of a little bit about the components. First, I mean, it's Z-Man, and the board is just a pleasure to touch. Uh, I'm afraid to play on it because it may not be so nice to touch anymore. And, the, you know, there's little marks because it's a used copy, but also the cards are, are really, they have this great tactile uh, element to them. The counters are very, very pretty. Uh, the little wooden people, I wish they were bigger, were not quite so large. They kind of clutter the board a little bit, but I mean, that's a really minor, minor thing uh, comparatively, but there's just not enough room on some of the spaces for you know, a, a mass of people to be gathered at. Um, they would be maybe cooler as, I don't know, just little pegs or something. Um, the rules, you know, it's not a complex game. Uh, I think they are a little too verbose, too colorful, too pictureful, too whatever. They're harder for me to understand. I feel like uh, you could probably have put these rules on two pages of plain text and they'd be okay. For, <laughs> they'd, they'd be easier for me. But on the other hand, if this is helpful to some people having all these colors and examples and all this stuff to wade through to find the piece of information you want to know, if that helps some people uh, learn a game, it's not that bad on something this simple to see that. A um, couple of things that really, really stuck out for me. One, I've seen this played by young kids. The 10 and up thing, you know, that's like the old Milton Bradley one. You can really play this at a fairly early age, I would say. Uh, I think the group we're seeing had some people uh, a couple years under 10 in it. Um, even so, it's still a complicated enough puzzle that, you know, it's challenging if you play it at its highest difficulty, I believe. Maybe I'm just dumb, but, you know, I, I, I think even had I known everything that I know at this point and sat down or stood up to play with the deck that I had, I would have a hard time with it. So I think no matter what, you can make the game by the difficulty level with the... Uh, with the epidemics cards as your mechanism, you can make the game about as hard as you like. Uh, it may come to the point where a group of players is so good at it that they can beat it almost every time. And that would be kind of a shame, but I'm not quite sure what you do there. 
Another thing is dealing out the uh, um, the different roll cards kind of makes you approach the game with a different strategy. And I would guess some players would want to be able to pick their roll, and you could certainly attack uh, the problem in a particular manner again and again and again if you always have the medic and the scientist and the dispatcher. Uh, those, those are a good combination. What, what else do we have here? Uh, the researcher is important too, though. So the four I had are great. The operations expert, he seems like kind of the loser in the bunch. And so I kind of lucked out in getting the four that I did. I think if uh, if you're playing in less players and you have less of those options available, of course you have an easier time coordinating with less players. Uh, but you know, what do you do if you don't have the medic? Wow, that's got to be pretty harsh, right? I mean, what if you you have the operations expert and the dispatcher as your two characters? You're going to be facing a much harder game. So I think randomizing that can provide you with some real differences and you have to come up with new strategies on how to cope with these roles that you have as opposed to, you know, the way I played throwing all throwing four of the five down and getting the four best. Uh, it was fairly easy to come up with, at least partly through the game, how to, how to start to cope. And I feel like I was getting a handle on what to do Early on, it would have been tough. The cards just weren't there in the hands. And with so much separation of players, I think it probably plays pretty well in different numbers, just because uh, the easier cooperation, the larger hand sizes, stuff like that helps make up for the lacking roles that you have. The roles allow you to kind of bring the, the players together better, especially with the dispatcher or the researcher who can do certain sharing type type abilities. Another thing that I look at is, and again this is for the younger players, what does it teach you? You know, first of all it teaches you this, this geography type thing, which is great, but it's also teaching you this teamwork, this interaction, this working towards a, a singular goal, all kind of great uh, aspects that sadly in my life never really existed. And, you know, maybe I'm just not genetically disposed to those, but I can definitely see where this is a really helpful thing, and it would be, this is the kind of game I would, I would, I would suggest, you know, teaching this in a classroom, not because it teaches you a whole lot about the biology, but just that it gives you all these sort of general things, the geography, the, the concept of the epidemics and how they spread just in general in a very loose, you know, non-detailed sort of way, but also the teamwork aspect and, and, and the critical thinking and all that. Um, unfortunately, the way our school systems are now, there's no time to explore little things like this that are fun. You have to work towards, you know, getting uh, your reading and writing and, and rhythmic dick uh, on, uh, on the tests, on the standardized tests. That's all that matters now. So, you know, the ability to say take one day a week or, 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 or a few hours every day to explore things the way learning really should be has just been canceled out. So I go off on this tangent on the rant. The game itself really impressed me. I stepped back with kind of a wow because the only game that I've seen that I'd say is at all, I, I've seen very few games that are at all like this, that have even hints of this. Republic of Rome, when you sat down for the uh, two-player game, uh, or the solitaire game, I guess. But for the two-player game, you had the same, oh, we have to fight together to save Rome. Uh, in larger numbers of players, I don't feel like that becomes as overriding a condition because the other players really are your competition, whereas in the two-player game, the mechanism becomes the competition which the two players are facing. And they really are almost an alliance to keep Rome alive against these senators who, you know, are doing dumb things like passing land bills. Uh, and the other one, 
is the old psychology today, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is, um, game, the city's game, which faces you with sort of a prisoner's dilemma, pure game theory type of actions, uh, where it's possible for everyone to win, and that's the best solution, but it's also possible for just one person to kind of win. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that you don't get in the bottom of the heap. This doesn't have that. This has, it's an all or nothing affair. And it really kind of struck me in a way that nothing that I've played, you know, I've played things like, um, oh, I don't remember what it is, the ripoff of the uh, uh, RPG type theme. Uh, uh, GW put it out, these big boxed sets of, you wander around on a board, in a dungeon and you're all kind of on the same team but it's kind of like uh, legend or whatever where you're also working against one another one of you wins so that's a different feeling when a cooperative game isn't fully cooperative it can be very very nasty with a game like this it's just truly a cooperative game you're a team you have one goal you you aren't looking to gain some little edge over everyone else. Uh, and, of course, real life is never quite like that, but for the most part it is. Which is to say, you know, once you're in the business world, at least in my, my line, you want your team to do well. That, that's the biggest thing, the most important thing. Now, if you take on a particularly uh, complex added task and impress everyone by doing well with that, that's great and everything, but when it comes down to it, if the team didn't produce, it hardly matters, at least with the way we're trying to move things. <laughs> you know, it really, it comes down to the team, but certainly the impression that you form on other people's minds, even just, even within your team, is more important perhaps than what you actually accomplished in your team, which is to say some team members sit in this kind of position where they don't seem to do a lot, but they come up with these ideas, They, th you can bounce things off of them, they'll never advance because nobody quite realizes how much of an advantage they are, but once they're gone you might miss them a lot. and. That's just kind of a shame in the way our society is structured. We can't find that and we can't recognize uh, the people who are vital and maybe actually make a, a great team more than just a good team. Uh, in this, that's not an issue. In this, it's just you're working together and you're playing. And, you know, the only thing I could see competitive in this is if you set up several tables of it and and teams were competing against each other it's it's really an innovative idea for me i don't know how many other cooperative games there are out there but this one struck me with kind of an oh wow you know this is i feel a lot really impressed with this and i also feel like the mechanics etc made it not unpleasant solitaire in the way that a truly solitaire game would be usually so I'm, uh, I'm giving this a fairly fairly decent rating. I, I gave it around a 7. I'm not sure. I've got kind of this, I want to play it with other people before I think about raising that. But I think it's, it's, it's a really good game and I can see where it catches people and, and especially people who maybe aren't all that into the competitive side of board gaming but want to be doing something with their friends who are board gamers. And does it translate well between the two? That's the question. You know, can somebody who enjoys the competitive side enjoy this as well? I'm not sure. Um, if all you're into is beating your friends, you're not going to like this. But uh, it makes a nice bridge for the people who maybe don't want to play the ultra-competitive games, especially all the time. I know that we had people in our group who liked playing board games for whatever reason. They liked hanging out with a group of people who played board games. They had no problem understanding the games. They just weren't really that into the competition side. And I'm not sure I am either. But uh, 
I'm into the story side. This tells a good story, and it, it, it looks like an enjoyable game overall.